Now, me and you be any some of us. The Bible says that we all have sons upon shoulders of the glory of God. All of us. Not one of us is sons. Every one of us is sinful. But Jesus was sons. Because he had no earthly father. Jesus was born of a virgin woman by the work of the Holy Spirit, the Bible tells me. And because of that, he had no sinful nature. No wrong was found in him. He was perfect. He was a perfect, perfect sacrifice. You know, in the Old Testament, when they looked for a sacrifice for the sins, and you know, when they took him up to that temple, to make that annual sacrifice, it had to be the perfect animal. It had to be the animal without spot or blemish, it had to be the perfect, perfect animal. And you know, the son that took away the sins, the Bible said, covered the sins. But Jesus went to the cross for me and for you. Absolutely perfect, absolutely blameless. The Bible says it. You know, they took him, they mocked him, they spat him, they had him in the auditorium. And you know, they began to make a fool of him, mock him, spat upon him. And you know, sometimes you can blame the Roman soldiers, sometimes you can blame the, the wicked people. Because one day they were singing Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, the next day they shall be crucified. You know, this is the type of people that we live in. This is all the world today. And we can blame the people, and we can blame the Roman soldiers, we can blame all this for Jesus going to the cross. But you know what put Jesus to the cross me and you? Jesus went to the cross for me and for you. Jesus went to the cross for me and for you. Whether you believe that tonight or you don't believe that tonight makes no difference to the word of God. There's no change to the word of God. Jesus died for your sins and Jesus died for my sins. The exact, exact same day when he went to the cross, regardless of what we think. The Bible says they crucified him. Through his hands they see nailed to an old piece of wood, a rough piece of wood. You know, there's a song made by Brother John, it's another day in the morning. It's, you know, it's in one of the slight next series. It's two pieces of rough timber. Two pieces of rough timber. That's what he was nailed to. Hung upon the cross, raided upon the cross. The Bible says he, he hung on the cross in the heat of the day. You know, and not the flesh hanging from his from his body. Hanging there. The Bible says that you know that Jesus had legions of angels waiting on his very call. Jesus didn't have to go to the cross at no point. Jesus could call upon that angels to take him off the cross, wipe the, the white planet Earth off the face of the universe. And go back to heaven with his father. Jesus could have done that. When he was praying in the garden, he said to his father, is there any other way? And all of heaven remained silent. The Bible tells me that Jesus was obedient, even to the point of death, even death on the cross, the Bible says. He went to the cross for me and for you tonight. And you may be saying, well, I didn't want Jesus to go to the cross for me. I didn't want Jesus to go to the cross for me. You maybe didn't want him to go to the cross for you. But I promise you tonight, like you needed him to go to the cross. You needed him to go to the cross. And the Bible says he went, he was nailed hand and feet, and they hung upon that cross. And the Bible says that they took him off the cross, and Jesus never even had his own tomb. They, they, they never, he never even had his own tomb. What they would have done, they, 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 the poor people in them days, they would have just took him and they would have Jesus never even had a tomb, but you know, there was a man there, and he, he allowed Jesus to borrow the tomb. He allowed Jesus to borrow the tomb, but you know, God, and again, in his, in his infinite wisdom, and, and he knew. Jesus knew that he didn't need a tomb for very long. The Bible says he only needed it for three days. And you know, for me, for you, that maybe we, we get here that for oh, three days, whatever. But thank God that Jesus was only dead for three days because the Bible says that, you know, that God raised him from the dead. God raised him from the dead. And, you know, the Bible tells me that there was over 500 people seeing Jesus alive after the death on the cross. After his ascension, after his resurrection from the dead, 500 people saw him alive. Jesus is alive and he sits the right hand of the Father today for me and you. Jesus isn't dead. Though every Pope of Rome up to the one we've got now is dead. Mother Teresa is dead. The Prophet Muhammad is dead. All the other religions of the world, the men is dead. But our God reigns victorious. Our God is alive. And if you know you have an opportunity to make this place, you can accept or you can reject what I'm preaching. You can accept or you can reject it. You know, your sin, the Bible tells me that the sin separates us from a true and loving God. The sin separates us. As long as we want to walk and live in the sin, we will be separated from God. And you may be saying to yourself tonight in this place, but if this God that you speak about is so good and so loving and so merciful and so gracious, why then is there such a place as hell? Why then is there people in hell? I can promise you today that hell is greater than uh, Satan and his demons. But through man, through the fall of man, through man's disobedience, there is people in hell today. Not because of God. Remember that. Take that in. Listen to the very, very good. There is people in hell today that is in hell because of self, not because of God. Because you know why? Because we have this. We have the word of God. We have the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have, we have everything that we needed to get to heaven. We have everything that we need. 
but you and your life have the decision to make. Do you have a decision to make tonight in this place? Do you have a decision to make? Do you accept or do you reject the only begotten Son of God? That's up to you. The one thing I will never do is force anybody to accept the gospel. The Bible says it's the goodness of God that draws men to repentance. Not me. You're in this place tonight, you know where you are. I know where I am. We know, may not know where each other is. We may not know where each other is, but you know where you're at tonight in this place. You know that if God was return, to return this very day, you know where you're going to spend eternity. If, if, if you were to drop today, if you were to die today, I don't know if it's morbid, but if you were to die today, how sure are you going to get to heaven? How sure are you going to get to heaven? You know that, I know that ourselves in our own personal lives. Ask yourself that question today. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but thank God that Jesus, thank God for Jesus, because now because of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, that we have, we can, we can experience the glory of God. We've all sinned and fall short of this glory, but this glory now has been given a free gift. The Bible says in Romans 6, 23, that you know that the, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. Now for me and for you tonight in this place, you can have that free gift. You can have that free gift. You know, I want to explain something to you. Wages is something you work for. I'll be at work tomorrow and I'll work and I'll get my wages. At the end of the day, I'll be paid for what I did. And that's exactly what you will receive in a spiritual sense. If you don't accept Jesus. We have the free gift here. We have it tonight. We have it tonight. We have the free gift. It's here, available to all who call upon him. But too many people want to keep working. Too many people want to keep working for the, and I'm talking about spiritual sense, I'm not talking about physical work. In a spiritual sense, people want to keep working, think they're going to work their way, earn the salvation, work for the salvation. The Bible tells me salvation is a free gift. It's a free gift, and that free gift is on offer tonight. You know, do you believe that Jesus died for your sins? Do you believe that God raised him from the dead? The Bible says, all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. All who call upon the name, name of the Lord will be saved. I don't care how many decisions you made. I don't care if you made 50,000 decisions. It makes no difference to me tonight. It makes no difference to God tonight. Today is the day of salvation, the Bible says. Today is the day of salvation. No one has promised tomorrow. Yesterday, as I said this, this morning, the meeting, yesterday is gone, forgotten, done. You can't get that back. Tomorrow belongs to God. Whether we see it or not, God knows. But we have today. We have today with the breath of our bodies. We have now. We have the very second and the sweet of the cross judge. We have. The decision is up to you. You maybe say, I'm not rejecting, I just want to just accept them right now. That is reject. You either accept or you reject God. You either accept or you reject God. Forget about forget about the past, forget about yesterday, forget about everything that happened. Today is a brand new day. Let's get a right today with God. Let's get it right today. All of sin, and the sin, as I said to you, separates you from God, that no longer do we have to be separated from God. Because Jesus came, He is the way because He paid the price. He is the way because He died on the cross. He is the way because He rose from the dead. There is not, there's no other man. Do you know something tonight? Even if you wanted to die for your family to get to heaven, you couldn't. Even if you wanted to die for your family, you wanted to give your life up as a sacrifice for your family, you couldn't even do that. You couldn't even do that tonight. But Jesus did it for the whole world. The Bible says that, you know, for God so loved the whole world that he gave his one and only son. And anyone, the Bible says, who calls upon him will be saved. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've done. Neither does God. Trust me on that. God does care. You know, the, 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 the scripture, it's on the back of Come to me, all God, who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest, it says. That's what it's talking about. Come to him. Come to him as you come to me as you are. Come with all your problems, all your problems, all your cares, all these things, all these baggage, all these chains, all these weights to weigh you down. Christ says, Come. Come and set you free tonight. That's it. Come and set you free. You have, a, you have an offer tonight. Jesus is on offer tonight. The, the only begotten Son of God, the free gift of God, is on offer tonight. It's on offer tonight. You know, the Bible tells me that if you don't, that I don't, I'm not going to go on too long, I'm going to finish a minute. The Bible says that hell is patient, hell waits. Hell is real. We cannot preach the gospel without mentioning hell. The gospel makes no sense without hell. Jesus coming to the earth and dying for mankind makes no sense without hell. Hell is real. And hell waits for me. And the enemy, and the enemy just wants to destroy me. Remember that tonight. Hell is patient. 
and hell is real. Hell is still hot. There is people in hell today. The Bible talks about a rich man who went to hell, who went to a place called Hades, and he cried out. He cried out to, to Abraham. And he says, Abraham, please go back to my father's house. Please tell my brothers, please to come to this place of torment. And Abraham says, they've got the men. They've got, basically, I'm paraphrasing, they've got the preachers. If they won't listen to them, then they won't bother us then. I'm based on an agony in this flame. I'm an agony in this, this, this flame. Please, please, I beg you, Jesus. Just tell them please to come to this place. See, if we had a glimpse of hell tonight, if we had a glimpse of what hell is like tonight, every one of us would change a lot. But we have the opportunity tonight. And it's great to remember that Jesus is God's unmerited favor. It's the grace of God. It's something you don't deserve and I don't deserve. But it's an offer tonight for me and for you. But all our problems come to Christ for the right tonight. Come to Christ for the right tonight. Now I'm going to sing a worship song. You know, if you're in this place tonight, please. Please, I beg you, put it right one time. I beg you tonight, this place, if you, if you feel as the Lord has spoken to you, and I'm going to emphasize on this, I don't care how many decisions you've made before. I don't care where you've been, I don't care what you've done. And neither does the brothers, you know, I promise you that. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of your life. You come forward, we're going to worship the Lord tonight. You come forward tonight. Please, I beg you. Come forward with the right thing. I'm not, I'm not trying to walk in, I'm not trying to say, oh, come forward, so, you know, I feel good about preaching the gospel. But it's not to come forward, then you know something. God still does his work. God, the, word, the Bible tells us that God's work never goes for you, but I would encourage you for the, for the sake of your soul, for the sake of eternity. Come forward tonight, I pray. Hallelujah. Let's stand as we worship the Lord.